Okay, so carbon cycle, pure students and IP students. So practice how to sketch this one out. It can come out as a five to six mark question. So we got carbon dioxide in the air that is taken in by the sea, is taken in by the plants also for photosynthesis. So in the sea, it is as a carbon sink, okay, whereby it stores the carbon. Uh, it is slightly dissolvable in water. There's also aquatic plants that uses the carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. Okay, so subsequently plants will then be consumed by the animals. Okay, no matter what, all organisms, be it plants or animals, will undergo death and decay. So this will then form fossil fuels, which in modern days we use it for combustion and this returns back as carbon dioxide. Okay, so both plants and animals can of course undergo decay, respiration, death. So all these contribute back carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Okay, so similarly, plants also undergo death and decay. So this becomes carbon dioxide in the air. Okay, so mindful of the processes, you will have to include it when you actually sketch it out. Okay, so this carbon is very important because almost all our major macromolecules all contain carbon. So when you think about the carbon, uh, carbohydrates, the elements, under your nutrition topic, uh, proteins, fats, all contains carbon. So essentially, we are made out of carbon. Living organisms are made out of carbon. So bear in mind, carbon sinks, oceans and forests, these are carbon sinks. So carbon sinks over here is whereby they can store large amount of carbon. So over here, this large amount of carbon, not our little Bukit Timah Hill and also not our East Coast Beach. These are huge oceans like the Atlantic or the Brazilian rainforest, the Amazon rainforest. Okay, so impact on the environment. So you have got hunting, deforestation, water pollution, untreated sewage. So this untreated sewage, this part you have to know very well, including the farming part. Okay, so untreated sewage is whereby it has still have sources for growth of bacteria and algae so when it dumps into the nearby lake or the nearby pond not the ocean of course nearby lake or nearby pond there is a huge growth of the algae so this is what we call the algae bloom so once the algae forms a layer over the lake i have got sunlight that is prevented from entering so aquatic plants die, so subsequently aquatic animals die. So decomposition starts to set in, which will increase bacteria. Okay, the first sort of bacteria is aerobic bacteria, meaning to say it uses oxygen for its own growth. So once it competes, because bacteria uh, uh, multiplies extremely rapidly, there's a huge decrease in oxygen and organisms start to die. So now I have got death, so many death happening, decomposition taking place, lack of oxygen dropping. That's when anaerobic bacteria starts to come in. So anaerobic, as the name suggests, just like anaerobic respiration, it does not require oxygen. So anaerobic bacteria will then break down and release toxic gases. So eventually, all this water, the entire place is dead and nothing is able to survive inside. In some cases, if these sewage streams down to a nearby village in the rural areas or the villages, it can cause typhoid, cholera, which will then enter water sources. Uh, when it enters water sources, it can potentially wipe out a huge population. Okay, so this part is what we call eutrophication, whereby it causes the entire algae bloom. Okay, the next one that you will have to know is actually similar, biomagnification, bioaccumulation. Now, magnification is more in terms of numbers. So if I got one unit of toxin in each of these streams, so let's say I got three streams. Okay, so three streams are eaten up by one fish. So one fish will have three units each of the toxin. So one fish got three units, meaning to say over here I got three times three, nine units. So if one seal eats three fish, the seal will have nine units each. Okay. So if the polar bear eats two seals, then I will have 20, uh, 18 units of toxin. So from one unit of toxin in one shrimp, it became 18 units of toxin in the polar bear. So that is an 18 times magnification. 
Okay, bioaccumulation is just saying that the toxin has accumulated through the organisms. So these toxins like insecticides, mercury, these are pollutants. So they tend to accumulate in animals and it magnified over the years because my predators need to consume increasing amount of prey. Okay. So how do we preserve, conserve the environment? So these are the common ones that you have. Renewable energy, pretty much straightforward. Okay, just make sure you know about two to three of it. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty much about it. Thank you so much.